station has taken notice. Oh, my God. Good luck keeping up with us, <laughs> amateurs. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show, the show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs, you'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting the website the bbqcentral.com now let's get in the smoke here's your program host greg rempe welcome to the barbecue central show this is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling centralites how's your life I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. By now, you should know that the show originates from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. Dare I say it? Oh, yeah, I will. It's the barbecue capital of the North Coast. People will say, what is the North Coast? Well, in Ohio, there's a lake, Great Lake Erie, that sits just to the north of us here in Cleveland. And to us, that is the North Coast. We Cleveland is like the North Coast and, and outlying cities in the greater metropolitan area of Cleveland, Ohio, that's the North Coast. I know, coast typically refers to places with palatial beaches and sunshine and what all that great stuff. Not here in Cleveland. No, no, no. If there's a body of water that has dirt leading up to it, that's a beach for us folks, okay? All right, thanks for joining me. Great show lined up, as always. Jam-packed show. couple interviews lined up. Going to tell you about those here in a second, but let me give you some contact information first in case you want to get in touch with the show, and you can do it at any time by emailing the show, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. That's the way you want to get in touch with the show. Here are the guests that we have locked and loaded. Next segment coming up right around 12 past the hour, Julie Reinhardt will be joining us to talk turkey, pun intended. Julie wrote, she smoked a backyard barbecue book. A handful of months ago, we had her on the show to talk about that. Figured, why not change it up a little bit and inject some estrogen into the show and have expert barbecue chef Julie Reinhardt on. So we'll be talking about how to smoke your turkey and everything that goes before and after that as well. So stay tuned for that around 12 past the hour. Segment after that, very unique interview from someone that you have never heard of in regards to competition barbecue or maybe somebody that is high on the radar of barbecue itself. I like your host. He's a guy by the name of Mel Abandonalo. Now, I happen to know Mel personally. He was my uh, cross-the-street neighbor when I lived in Saratoga Springs for a number of years growing up. And he has a very unique way of cooking turkeys that I thought, why not give you guys like a week advanced head start notice on this deal? And if it strikes you as something that you would like to try out. You have ample time to gear up and give this thing a whirl before Turkey Day comes in just over a week and change. Mel Abandonalo will be sharing his garbage can turkey method way of cooking. So stay tuned for that. Again, Mel Abandonalo around half past the hour. Let's quickly look at some of the competition things that have taken place over the course of the weekend. Uh, I don't even think Memphis Barbecue Network has had a competition, or at least I haven't reported in the last couple weeks. Uh, No big changes over in Florida Barbecue Association, but there was a big contest in Arizona on the Kansas City Barbecue Society side of things, and Uh Iowa Smokey D's has taken over top spot from Rod Gray and the folks at Pellet Envy Competition Cooking Team. It was really only a matter of time here as Iowa Smokey D's and I Smell Smoke had been nipping at the heels of Rod Gray. As we all know, Rod is a friend of the show, and he has been sitting atop the Kansas City Barbecue Society Team of the Year points chase here for the last handful of months. It seemed like QI was up there at first, and then slowly but surely, Rod Gray overtook QI, who has since fallen to eighth place currently, and he has been riding high atop the leaderboard for Team of the Year. 
until this past weekend where Iowa Smokey D's pulled out Grand Championship in Arizona. That was put on by the guys over at AZ Barbecue, Michael Reinman. They did a very great job out there, so kudos to them and the boys at AZ Barbecue. You can find them at azbarbecue.com. The points race chase seems to be even closer. Last week was very close. This week, Iowa Smokey D's sits atop the Team of the Year dashboard. And Pellet Envy is very close at second. Well, you say, well, how close is very close? Let me tell you. How about four points? How about this? From first until tenth place is less than 300 points. What? Less than 300 points. I had exchanged emails with Rod Gray here. It was two weeks ago when he was in North Carolina at the Hog Happening, and he was nervous. He knew that other teams were very close, and he didn't want to be in a position where his competitions were out for the year and he was kind of a top waiting into seeing if anybody was going to catch up to him or not and it looks like Iowa Smokey D's has and we'll see what happens here over the next few weeks but uh, very exciting times here in the Kansas City Barbecue Society for sure you would recall if you're a listener to the show of maybe a month month and a half ago I did a little piece at the end of one of the Barbecue Central shows about how Traeger was making their wood pellets and how they had this patent out and Yet they seem to be very secretive, and this is Traeger as the company. They seem to be very secretive or very roundabout as far as how they were talking about their wood pellets, being sure to say that they were 100% hardwood, which technically they were. But during their patent process, it says specifically that they use flavoring oil in order to get the finished product. So if you wanted apple wood, they were using a apple-flavored oil, hickory wood, a hickory-flavored oil. That was the big stink that was going on there, and after a number of emails that were uh, quickly shot back to me from Traeger, the corporate office, from their sales and marketing guy, saying that they were just 100% wood and that was it. They didn't want to come on the show to talk about it. I don't know why. That was kind of the backstory to all that. Well, here, there's a website called pelletgrilloutlet.com, and they have made it specifically clear, and this used to be a company called Traeger Outlet, They have evidently switched out of the Traeger pellets altogether. They are offering Bear Mountain barbecue pellets. Bear Mountain wood pellets, uh, they're offering these because they are made of 100% pure hardwood. They do not use oils, starches, or fillers. And here are the details. It seemed that the customers were a little irritated that wood oil was being used to flavor their products. The only thing that I didn't necessarily agree with here that Pellet uh, Grill Outlet has to say is that many companies use a base wood, such as alder or oak, which is true, and simply add wood oil flavoring to produce a wood-like flavor. Well, that's not true. The only company that I know of and that has that patent is Traeger. That seems a little weird, don't you think? Uh-oh. So they've gotten away from their the Traeger pellets. They were the only ones that I knew of that were adding wood oil because they had the patent on it, which means it's protected. No other company could be doing that. Otherwise, there would be a direct violation of a patent. So I have an email into Pellet Grill Outlet to see exactly what the deal is. I've heard from sources on the inside that Traeger might be getting away from online selling altogether, especially through Pellet Grill Outlet, and might be doing something completely on their own with their own pellets. Because rumor has it if you didn't use like the Traeger pellets, then their warranty might expire or something like that. I have to check into that, too. So that's what's happening, a little follow-up story there. Pellet Grill Outlet going to a different brand of pellet than their namesake pellet, Uh-oh. Traeger. Big Bear Barbecue Pellets. Quick reminder about D-Dog's Barbecue Rub. You know you love D-Dog's Barbecue Rub, but would you like to buy them locally? Well, why wouldn't you want to buy them locally? You don't have to pay the shipping then. because If you do, then D-Dog's needs your help. Send him your name, address, and phone number of your local barbecue store. Farmer's Market or Grocery Store, and D-Dogs will do the rest. You can email all that info to Darren, D-A-R-I-N, Darren, at ddogsbbq.com, and he will get in touch with that store. They will cut a deal, and soon enough you'll have D-Dogs barbecue rubs and sauces fully stocked at your favorite place to buy barbecue rubs and sauces. How easy is that? And then the next time you run out, maybe you're in the middle of a cook and you run out of D-Dogs barbecue rubber sauce. No more cursing yourself. You can just drive right down to the store that you helped Darren hook up and buy it. You're back to cooking. It's simple as that. DDogsBBQ.com to order if you're not afraid of shipping charges. But you can email that information of your local store to Darren, D-A-R-I-N, at DDogsBBQ.com.
All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's Julie Reinhardt from SheSmoke.com. We're going to be talking about how to smoke a turkey. Stay tuned. It's Rempy and you right here on the Barbecue Central Show. The future of barbecue is already here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tall Boy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a three-bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. The only show of its kind on any kind of radio. Any kind of radio. It's the bar- bar- Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back to the Barbecue Central Show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe, BBQ Central Radio at gmail.com. If you're interested in getting in contact with the show, that's the way to do it. This portion of the show brought to you by the good folks at the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices, four to choose from, actually. Not to mention a host of other products that make your barbecue and grilling life easier. Two way to find them online. BBQGuru.com, the BBQGuru.com, or you can dial them up toll free 800 288 Guru. That's 800 288 Guru. The good folks at the Barbecue Guru. As promised, joining me now, no pun intended, to talk turkey. Why not have an expert, a author, and a barbecue restaurant owner to uh, to talk turkey with? We welcome back friend of the show, Julie Reinhardt. Julie, how are you? I'm doing great, Craig. Thanks. Appreciate you taking time out to join me and talk about this turkey. And we're going to not talk about the oven. But before we get, actually get into that, a little bit earlier in the year, you had released a book called She Smoke, a backyard barbecue book, which I got an advanced copy of, and two mentions or three mentions of in the book, so we appreciate that. How is the book doing, and, and how, are, how is it being received? You know, it's doing great, and we're um, planning a whole other spring tour uh, for next spring, and of course, pumping up uh, the whole holiday sales, which is always fun. <laughs> you know, at Smoke and Peace, we do a ton of smoked turkeys and Thanksgiving dinners, so I'm tying that in with a book because we have a whole holiday chapter now let's go ahead and talk this turkey thing thanksgiving coming up probably if you're a food person or if you just like to eat food this is many people's favorite holidays this thanksgiving deal first of all let's talk about the turkey itself what are you looking for when you are buying your turkey we definitely want a a natural and fresh turkey if possible it's going to help Bring in the flavors when it's fresh. You're not uh, kind of fighting with the with the frozen. Um, you also want a natural turkey because we're going to brine the turkey before we smoke it. So you don't want any added solutions. Do you have any recommendations on how much bird to buy given the amount of people you might be having at your house? As a general rule, a pound per person. Um, that's for eating. If you want leftovers, go a little higher. Well, I, I would definitely go higher. You've got to have the leftovers of Thanksgiving, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so start with a pound and go up. <laughs> All right. So we have the bird. It's natural and it's thawed out. Are you doing anything to the bird preparatory-wise before we actually get into the brining? You know, just rinse it off and pat it dry. You know, um, once you take it out of the package, take it out of the, out of the 
the giblets and things inside. So first step is brining it. Well, you did mention me. brine. Now, do you not inject? I do not inject. I like to I brine and then smoke, but I'm not an injector. In fact, I can always tell when people inject their barbecue. To me, the, the flavors fight with the meat. I just want to taste the meat and have a nice rub on the outside. But I'm not a fan of injecting. In fact, I, I've even written a poem about it. It's called Eck, I Don't Inject. Can you give us a passage? Eck, I Don't Inject. Don't put needles in my meat before you cook it on low heat. And it goes on from there. <laughs> like it. <laughs> Don't put needles in my meat. That's right. We have a, a fun thing on the She Smoke blog. is a food poetry Friday. And every Friday I, I attempt to write a food poem or at least discuss somebody else's. And then people can, um, can post their own food poem. You see, it's not just about the barbecue here on the Barbecue Central Show. We're also expanding Central Lights Horizon by offering a poetry once a week over at cheesemoke.com, right? That's right. You know, <laughs> barbecue is like poetry in your mouth. Why not create some poems about it? Couldn't agree more. So you have the turkey ready to go. We're going to brine. We're not injecting as we've heard through poetry. So yeah. what kind of a brine do you use, and do you have a basic recipe that you might be able to share with the Central Lights? Um, you know, the, the main thing about uh, brine is that uh, you've got a certain amount of, you've got enough salt, a saline solution that's saltier than the than the turkey is naturally so that it draws in the salt. So usually I do about two cups of salt to two gallons of water. If you're using kosher salt, double that. And then from there you can just add flavors. I love to use citrus for turkey. And then you can add in clove honey, brown sugar, what other flavors you like. I like peppercorns. Just making sure that the, the water-salt ratio is right, and then you can add in whatever you like. So once you drop the turkey into the brine, is there a time frame on how long you have to let it do its magic in the brine before you pull it back out to cook? Yeah, you want about an hour per pound minimum and a maximum of 48 hours. You know, I usually do it overnight. Once you get past 48 hours, it can turn the meat kind of mushy. All right, so when you pull it out of the brine, what's the process of getting it ready to cook? First, rinse it off because you don't want the brine solution on the bird. Pat it dry and then just prepare the bird like you would most barbecue. Do a nice dry rub. With turkey, though, because the skin is so thick um, and it can get a little rubbery when you're smoking it on low temperatures, I like to gently lift the, the skin up with my hands and get the rub underneath the skin. Um, just so you can get the flavors inside the bird. I also like to stuff, you know, garlic cloves in there. And then on the outside, rub it with olive oil or butter and your rub. Then fire, same as is just about anything, you know, about 200, 225 degrees. If you want to crisp up the skin, which, again, a bit of a problem with, with smoking turkey, you can either start out a little higher and turn it low, or what I usually do is, is start low and, and crisp it up at the end. Do you put stuffing in the cavity of the turkey at all? Actually, you don't want to stuff a smoked turkey, and the reason is is that the stuffing will slow down the internal cooking temperature, and it won't get hot enough to get past the danger zone in time. So I may just put some pieces of onion and garlic and oranges, grapefruit, in there to, to infuse some flavor and some herbs, but not an actual stuffing because the turkey needs to get up to 140 degrees inside within four hours, and it just won't get there with the low temperatures of smoking. You also want to do smaller birds. You don't want to smoke a bird that's, you know, usually 14 to 16 pounds is the maximum for a smoked turkey, unless you, again, are going to go higher temperature for a while to get the temperature up. All right, so we want to look at that as a safety thing first. You want to get the bird up to uh, 140 or higher uh, outside of four hours. So the bigger the bird, the lower the temperatures, the longer that's going to take. So you're either going to have to take measures of cooking it higher to get it there quickly, or you're going to have to sacrifice size for safety. Exactly. You can always smoke too. The beauty of smoking your turkey is you've you freed up your oven. Uh, you know that's you don't have the two oven problem on Thanksgiving. So you can do all your sides and everything in the oven, and your turkey is outside smoking away. So it it does give you a lot of flexibility on Thanksgiving. Right. So we're talking with Julie Reinhardt. She's the author of She Smoke, a backyard barbecue book. She also co-owns Smoke and Pete's Barbecue Restaurant out there in Seattle, Washington. So if you ever get out to the great Northwest, certainly a place you want to check out if you're a barbecue connoisseur. Now, as you're cooking the bird in the smoker, is there a particular smoke wood that you use to enhance the flavor of the bird? Oh, I, you know, I love mixing it up, but um, I, I love fruit woods with poultry. So, um, and, and usually I use the wood in my backyard, which is, uh, we have a cherry tree and a, and a plum tree. <laughs> so we kind of, you know, we, we clip it and, and, and season the wood. But um, any oak is nice with turkey, so is, so is a little bit of hickory, whatever you like. So cooking at 225 or so, 240, 
What's the time frame for doneness? Obviously, it depends on the, the size of the bird, but usually four to six hours. Um, I usually figure uh, 30 minutes per pound. Is there a time frame yeah. when you start to check, no matter what? Yeah, usually about after four hours, I might insert my remote thermometer in the bird, and then that's usually when I start glaze the bird, too, just give it an extra sheen on the on the skin. A maple glaze always works well. For safety purposes, when you're taking the temperature of the turkey, what temperatures are you looking for to know that it's done? First of all, there's a couple ways to tell whether your bird is done. You want you want the meat to be at le- least 160. I often shoot for more like 180 on a smoked turkey. You can tell by wiggling the leg. If it's a little bit wiggly but not falling out, that's a good sign. Definitely take the internal temperature in the thigh meat. You also don't want it to just... You don't want the skin to be separating from the meat. That means it's getting overdone. Now, that's 180 in the thigh, not 180 in the breast. Correct. Do you have a breast temperature, too, that you look for? Well, the breast is just going to be a little bit lower. So I usually do the thigh just because then I know if the breast is going to be about 10 degrees lower. You also know that when the bird breast is going to raise another 5, 10 degrees, so factor that in. We're talking with Julie Reinhardt. She is the author of She Smoke, a backyard barbecue book, and also co-owner of Smoke and Pete's Barbecue, which is in Seattle, Washington, talking about this turkey cook feel on the smoker instead of the oven. So when you take it off, once you've reached your internal temperatures, you're going to let it sit. Is there a specific time frame that you want to let it sit before you actually start carving into this bad boy? I like 30 minutes, and that's usually really easy on Thanksgiving because suddenly something's not done and you know some gas is late. So give it 30 minutes and then start carving. It just kind of lets it sink into itself and the juices spread back into it. It's easier to carve when it's not piping hot as well. Do you have any suggestions on how to carve the bird? So I like to start with a drumstick, carving off the drumstick right at the joint and then I cut the meat from there then I usually go for the wing and then uh, when I'm slicing the breast I like to do an angle down first towards the bottom so that when you're slicing from the top the slices just come off really nice nice and evenly and then just keep mm-hmm. putting them to the platter I was given the honor of carving the turkey last year and I, I didn't do a bad job I did a pretty good job my dad usually is the one that, that slices the turkey very traditional home you know <laughs> and I think he was he was happy to, to give up the job I don't think It's something he enjoys. My brother and I cooked the dinner, so my mom was thrilled. She's like, we should do this every year. (laughs) Yes, let's Um, never cook again. (laughs) She'll never cook turkey again. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I've seen this recently, the last couple weeks on some of the Internet forums, people posting videos, is this fascination with spatchcocking turkey. I do it all the time with chicken, but is that something you ever fooled around with? You know what? Not with turkey. I do a batch cock of chicken, you know, all the time. I love I love doing it that way. Um, I honestly haven't done it with turkey. I just I'm just usually just throw it in there because I uh, it's easy, you know, to throw it in the throw it in the smoker and and then go prepare everything else. So it's it's not something I've done. We're talking with Julie Reinhardt. She is an author. She also is a barbecue restaurant owner, or co-owner with her husband. Are there any other tips or? techniques that you're doing after everything is finished anything that we left out that you want to include glazing and or buttering up the bird as you go is is a good idea again the butter or the oil will help crisp up the skin and that's also where you can get creative a really simple glaze would be maple syrup and butter and i just kind of melt it and then i just just keep it keep it warm and as and when i go check my coals i just slather the bird up don't have to worry about flare-ups, really keeping it pretty low, and especially if you have a water pan underneath your turkey. And I just really go generous on the, the butter maple syrup glaze. It, it, it gives a nice little sweetness to the to the skin. Mm. I love turkey skin, no doubt about it. Me too, me my, too. My cardiologist probably <laughs> I hates really me. any skin. <laughs> yeah, love that. Love, you, can't, you can't not eat. I'm not eat. convinced it's bad for you. I, I think I'm, there's something, it, nothing that good can be that bad for you. I was going to say, I could probably make an argument that it's actually good for you and people should eat more of it. I, I would actually <laughs> argue people telling them it, it is bad and that I'm doing them a favor by eating their share. That's true. That's, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Let's be selfish. Why not? It's Thanksgiving. I've got a whole family of skin pickers. We just fight, we just fight over it. So it's, it's, it's the World Wrestling Federation in your kitchen, right? Yeah, exactly. Nice. <laughs> I've been known to slap many hands as I'm trying to <laughs> get it on the table. Pile drivers and <laughs> atomic elbows coming in. Elbows. I have skin. a really good like karate elbow, actually. <laughs> Back from my karate days. Any? Uh, are there any like favorite sides of the the Reinhardt household that you have to have? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, sweet, I love sweet potatoes, and I like to do, I like, I can whip sweet potatoes, um, because you can, you know, sneak in more fat into them. Um, also, garlic mashed potatoes, again, with lots of butter, cream, and, and garlic. Um, and then just, just um, really, really untraditional, you know. I, I, I like all the traditional sides. Stuffing. I love oyster stuffing. Mmm. Smoked oyster stuffing. Thanksgiving can't come yeah, soon enough, hungry. as far as I'm concerned. I'm <laughs> telling you. So there you have it. We've uh, we've cooked the turkey, and we've had a tremendous amount of help from Julie Reinhardt. Her website is shesmoke.com. She's the author of She Smoke, a backyard barbecue book, and she also co-owns Smoke and Pete's Barbecue Restaurant in Seattle, Washington. Julie, always appreciate the time and continued success. Thank you so much, Greg. Love right. your show. Take care. Thanks. It's Julie Reinhardt. Yeah, so don't even try and tell me that you are not completely jacked up for Thanksgiving after listening to that segment. Thanks again to Julie Reinhardt for coming on. Again, her website, shesmoke.com. By the way, if you haven't checked out her book, it's really one of the better barbecue and grilling books that have been written that really give you that overall information from start to finish, whether you're a beginner, whether you're an intermediate, or whether you're an expert cooker. There's something in there for everybody, so check it out. Give me a quick time out. It's Rempy and you right here on the Barbecue Central Show. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy knockdown smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at Fred's Music and Barbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Get in the smoke. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. It's the Barbecue Central Show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Have any uh, questions you want to email the show? BBQCentralRadio at gmail.com is the place to do it. This portion of the show brought to you by Yoder's Smoky Mountain Barbecue. You know who they are by now, the leading online distributor of Meadow Creek barbecue equipment. Their barbecue smokers, pig roasters, chicken cookers, and grills are handcrafted in the Amish country of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and their goal is to give you outstanding value for the price and help you enjoy easy and profitable barbecues for years to come. They also carry a complete line of wonderful rubs and barbecue sauces. Check them out on the web, won't you? SeriousBBQs.com is the place to go. SeriousBBQs.com. That's Yoder's Smoky Mountain Barbecue. All right, as promised, uh, joining me now to talk about a very unique way of cooking your turkeys, and I figured why not since Thanksgiving is a week and change away, give you ample opportunity, Central Lights, if you want to get in on this. He is actually a family friend from up north, Saratoga Springs, New York. It's Mel Abendondolo joining us here on the Barbecue Central Show. Mel, how are you? Fine, Greg. 
thanks for taking the time out to talk to me about this. And I was kind of hipped to this unique cooking method uh, when my mom called last week. She had heard me have a discussion with a company that makes a specialty type of cooker, one where you just kind of load it in and you don't do a lot of other checking or anything like that. She said, you know what, you better call Mel because he has a very unique recipe that involves a garbage can that you might want to have him on the show about. And I said, hey, why not? So here we are. So before we actually get into that whole process, Mel, would you consider yourself an avid barbecuer or griller? Uh, pretty much so. Of course, we grill a lot. So when the turkey deal came along, it was kind of unique, and we've been doing it about 10 years now. So where does the concept come from? Word of mouth. You know, other people at camp, a unique way to cook a turkey because it's a garbage can. You know, kind of people get set back with that. <laughs> right. The only difficulty is you have to have a metal garbage can. In this day and age, they're not easy to come by. Inevitably, somebody will either email or call into the show and say, well, is it a galvanized can? Is it not galvanized? And then right. galvanized brings up this whole other set of potential issues where is it safe to cook in or not? So how do you address those issues? Well, it's usually a galvanized can. That's all you get when you can buy one in an old hardware store. After you heat it and use it up, it kind of puts a ceiling on the galvanized. There's no flavor comes through. It kind of gets burnt like an oven. It's browned inside and so forth. So it hasn't been a problem, and we're still alive. I was say, you're obviously still alive, so poisoning isn't necessarily an issue for you guys, at least. You know, you expect to get some flavor from it, but you don't. By the way, we're talking with Mel Abendondolo from uh, Saratoga Springs, New York, across the street neighbor from me back in the day. So, Mel, why don't you give us kind of a supply list of sorts so if people want to get in on this for next week, they can arm themselves at the proper hardware stores and venues. Well, sure. Well, what you need to do is uh, put uh, some tin foil on the ground as much as the garbage can will cover, and you use a stake about 24 inches long or a uh, 2 by 3 and you drive it in the ground, so there's clearance for the garbage can, and you set the turkey on the stake, you know, butt end down. You drive it in so you can put the garbage can, cover the turkey upside down. So the garbage can is, is upside down, covering the turkey. It's, it's the cooking vessel. And after this, you take a 20-pound bag of charcoal and go around the bottom on the outside, and you put about, I don't know, a shovel full on the top, light it off, and the whole cooking time is about four hours from the time you light it to the time the charcoal is all burnt down. It works like a big oven. You can hear it sizzling inside. So after that, you take the charcoal off and take the garbage can off and the turkey's done. Very often, it'll fall down to the tinfoil as it cooks. It falls off the steak. So I made a modified piece to go in there, which is a, a metal rod with a pan welded on the bottom, which catches gravy and so forth. And if the turkey goes down, it falls in the pan. And that's the gist of it. That's all there is. Mel Abandondolo joining us here on the Barbecue Central Show talking about garbage can turkey. Now, Mel, is there a definitive amount of space you want from the ground to the opening of the cavity of the turkey or just so you can get the, the can over the turkey no, itself? No, it doesn't, doesn't make any difference. I mean, I've cooked turkeys from 12 pounds to 20 pounds, and it's still four hours, and it's still a whole bag of charcoal. Yeah, I was going to say, is there, a, is there a size limitation? Probably not so much on the small end, but, I mean, can you have too big of a turkey? Probably. I mean, the most we've gotten is like a 22-pound turkey, and it fills up the garbage can pretty good, and I'd say that's the max. I haven't done any more. And then the other thing is the charcoal. Once you light it, you've only got four hours, and there's no adjustment. It lights on its own, of course, and continues to cook, and then burns down, so you can't stop it. What we've had is a smaller turkey in a 12-pound range really cooked to where it fell off the bone. That's where that pan on the bottom <laughs> catches everything. And you also need the tinfoil to make sure if anything falls down, it falls on the tinfoil. It doesn't fall on the dirt. Mel Abendondolo joining us here talking about garbage can turkey from the great city of Saratoga Springs, New York, home of the oldest thoroughbred uh -huh. racing track. The one question that I'm going to get most is how can you tell when it's done? I mean, this is just more of a thing where you got to trust the process. You trust the process and you go with the, um, the charcoal briquettes as they burn down. And as I say, they last about four hours, and that's all you go with. Uh, there is no turning it off. There's no overcooking. Uh, but the legs get loose and so forth, so the, the heat in there must go well over 500 degrees. If you, uh -huh. uh, if you had a bigger turkey and uh, the fuel was burning down, you could either, A, at that point, kind of dust it off the top, pull it up, and take your temperature of your meat internally if you, were, if you, I mean, if you really wanted to. Or if you think you oh. needed a little bit more time, you could just kind of disperse some more unlit fuel on top of the lit stuff to kind of keep the fire going. 
Oh, yeah. If you think you need more time for a larger turkey, you could just add more fuel to it and buy yourself another hour or so, another half hour, and uh, you could do it that way. But we've never felt a need to do that. <laughs> so, uh, But there could be a possibility. Why fix it if it's not broke, right, Mel? You're right. right. It's working now, you know. And a 20, 22-pound turkey is probably about the largest you can get in a garbage can because what I've found, the galvanized garbage cans, other than the real commercial heavy stuff, is of a small size. You know, I don't think it's a 30-gallon can. Mel Abendondolo joining us here on the Barbecue Central Show talking about turkey and garbage can cooking. Love to say that, actually. What kind of a life expectancy are we looking out of a garbage can? If Can you use it? 15 or 20 times before you'd have to buy a new one or more than that or less than that, you think? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I mean, I've got mine. We've probably done 10 times out of it. and You could use it 20 times and just keep an eye on it and see if it's going to burn out. It it shows no indication of burning now. It, it looks like an oven that's not been cleaned. That's what it looks <laughs> like. So, yeah, it would hold up pretty well. And once the cooking yeah. process is done, you just take it off and you just lift it off the steak if it hasn't made its way down to the to the tinfoil and you'll cut it up and well, let it rest as normal. The way we've got ours done, if you get, when you take it off, you got to use a new pair of work gloves because <laughs> it is hot. And you need to hold it pretty good to take it out and put it on the cutting board. Is that a two-person job? Then, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a two-person job. And then the pan that I have made, which catches the drippings and so forth, it's got a drain on it. And I open up the drain and you take out whatever's in the pan for the gravy and off you go. And while that time it's it's kind of sitting for a moment, probably all of 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. It's sitting while you make the gravy and then you start carving. But it's hard, hard to grab when you take it off because it's it's well cooked. It's kind of coming off the bone. It's, so a new pair of work gloves is necessary. Compared yeah. to any other way that you've had turkey, Thanksgiving or not, how does this taste-wise and texture-wise compare to some of the other ways of cooking, in your opinion? It's pretty much the same. It's, it's, it's moist. It's very, it flakes off. It's well done. And, of course, the uniqueness of everybody hanging around looking at a garbage can turkey right. makes it that much better. <laughs> and everybody tastes it, and they marvel at the flavor because... It's cooked in a garbage can, and everybody's conception of a garbage can is not necessarily a clean one. I perfected it by, by the means of uh, the steak was a problem. As the turkey would cook, this, it would fall off the steak and go down to the ground, and then I made a, another rod with a big washer on top to support the turkey because this is inside the turkey, and it still fell down to the ground. So now the third modification with the rod and the pan, the pan's about 12 inches around, about three inches high to hold all the drippings. If the turkey goes down, it falls into the pan. And then I've done uh, a roast. Works the same way. Turkey's the, the biggest thing. Well, it sounds like we, uh, we we should be going into business, finding a garbage can uh, distributor and slapping turkey cooker on it, and we could be millionaires here inside of a week. What do you think, Mel? We could go into processing in a week. You're right, easily. We don't have much time. Turkey time's coming around next week. <laughs> Mel, appreciate you coming on and talking about turkey garbage can cooking and if you have anything else that's uh, out of the ordinary that you'd love to come on to the barbecue central show and talk about i'd love to have you back <laughs> good deal greg good talking to you all right mel take care right, okay. that's mel abandondolo joining us here on the barbecue central show we'll take a quick break wrap it up with one more segment it's rampy and you right here on the barbecue central show the future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy knockdown smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS Competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU.
Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Get in the smoke. 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 It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, wrapping it up here with one more segment. This is the Barbecue Central Show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can email us at bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. Thanks again to my guests for joining me. We had William Montgomery from Quintessential Outdoor Living Company in the second segment talking about his Q-Series ovens. His website is indoors, I-N-D-O-O-R-S, the numeral 2, and then the word out. Dot com, indoors to out.com. Last segment, we had Mel Evandondolo talking about garbage can turkey. Yeah! Go down to the nearest Lowe's or old time hardware store where they still sell these galvanized trash cans, and you got yourself a cooker that you can take to the beach, that you can take to your backyard. If you're in Saratoga Springs, you can take it to Moreau State Park, where they still sell ice and wood at Campsite 101. That's right. I wanted to spend the last couple minutes going uh, over a product review. This is IntensityAcademy.com. All-natural, carrot-based sauces and uh, tea-infused sauces, green tea-infused sauces as well. Let's start with the not-so-good news first. And again, this is just for me. He sent me the chai... Chipotle Q, which is a barbecue sauce. Look, here it is for me. I cracked open the top, did a little sniffy sniff, and it lost me right off the top. Why? Because there was a overwhelming essence shooting over the top of my head, that being liquid smoke. And for me, liquid smoke is not going to cut it. I am not a fan of the liquid smoke. Now, with all due respect and fairness, it seems that the general consuming public is in love with liquid smoke. You can get any commercial grade Casey masterpiece or craft or whatever stuff is on the shelf that you can find anywhere at any time. And the overwhelming nose on that barbecue sauce is going to be liquid smoke. So definitely had to give that one a pass. That's costing you $5.49 plus uh, shipping on top of that. Now, the good news is that's the only knock against these products. I was able to, uh, he sent me this chai thai teriyaki sauce. And let me say this, it's good, really good. I love a good teriyaki sauce. Love to use it as a marinade, love to use it as a baste when I'm cooking. And this one does not disappoint. It's an all-natural organic tea-infused spicy teriyaki sauce. And that's what I found most intriguing about it is uh, right at the back end, there was just that little hint of heat that crept up, and I certainly appreciated that. This is going to cost you $5.49. I suggest buying at least one bottle of this, maybe two or three at a time, to save on shipping. This is highly, highly recommended here on the Barbecue Central Show. That's the Chai Thai Teriyaki Sauce. And then the last product that I was able to try is the Chai Curry Chup. Chai Curry Chup is an all-natural organic tea-infused curry ketchup. I don't usually use this descriptor that much, but there is a warmth with this ketchup that is outstanding. If you like curry, if you like that spice, uh, sometimes it can be used over the top, but this is just a perfect blend of, of all-natural ketchup and curry chai flavoring. 
definitely outside the box when it comes to ketchup. So if you're a ketchup fan, I have tried it on everything that you could possibly put ketchup on, and it wins. And again, it brings that extra warmth to the ketchup table that you wouldn't get from a Heinz or some of the other mass-produced crap. Again, $5.49. Shipping not included, and uh, that excludes tax as well. The uh, website, again, is intensityacademy.com. Thumbs up for the chai curry chup. Thumbs up for the chai thai teriyaki. Uh, Not so many thumbs up for the chai chipotle cube, but hey, you can't win them all. That's what I always say. Can't win them all. Intensityacademy.com, and thanks again, guys, for the samples. Certainly appreciate it. Love that ketchup. Actually going to have some tonight on some bratwurst that I'm making. Thanks again to my guests, William Montgomery from Quintessential Outdoor Living Company and Mel Abandondolo from Saratoga Springs, New York. Hope you enjoyed the show. As always, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week in the smoke. And until then, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. So long, everybody. 